the Head Above Water channel. I am Splash from the check-in. And right now, I have a very special guest with me. Uh, YouTuber. He's an author. It's a really dope website. Dope merchandise. I have with me right now, on the line, all the way in Georgia, United States of America, Guy on Girl TV, a.k.a. Shark Game. What's going on? Happy to be back, man. We back. Hey, man, I'm glad that you're back. And, you know, we have a lot to chop it up today. We have yeah. a lot to talk about. Now, before we get into uh, what we're going to get into, why don't you, like, promote your, your products, your website, all that good stuff? Well, if you want to uh, upgrade your dating life and uh, go check out my book, Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com. And if you really want advanced game, check out my Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash sharp game. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. And what we're about to get into today. Oh, man, you guys have been waiting for it. We're kind of late, but, you know, better late than never. We're going to talk about Naomi Osaka. Okay, <clears throat> so I want to get your opinion first, but let me just briefly, you know, get, give a brief description of um, what we're about to talk about in the background uh, story about this. So about a week or two weeks ago, Naomi Osaka, <clears throat> she had a tennis match with Serena Williams during the match. Uh, Serena Williams, she got penalized. She started talking about this is sexism, you're misogynistic, it's because I'm a woman, yada, yada, yada. So basically, um, Naomi Osaka won by default. Or, I mean, she just won based on the penalties that were given to Serena Williams. The media goes into a frenzy. It's uh, you know publicized all around the world. The Australian news they got a hold of, uh, they, they made a cartoon, they exaggerated Serena Williams' body, they made uh, Naomi Osaka look like a white woman in this infamous cartoon, that was very telling. Um, then they, they started interviewing her, talking about, oh, this is a win for Japan, this is a win for Japan, why don't you give a shout out for Japan? She's like, no, I'm not from Japan, all right, so that's the background of this whole story right here. And we want to get into that. So first and foremost, what did you feel, uh, you know, ab about that match? I just think the whole thing was just a bad situation. Mm -hmm. You know, from, uh, from the, 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 the matchup, even at, after the, the game was over and, it was just a bad situation from top to bottom, man. You know, the media tried to put a spin on everything, tried to make it seem like it was something that it wasn't. Um, now, I do think that um, it's a lot of double standards in tennis. And, you know, I could kind of see where Serena was coming from with some of the stuff she was saying. Maybe if she was... um. Uh, a man, you know, maybe the the ref wouldn't have penalized her because based on the you know what I've seen in the past involving tennis, so I think she has some good points. But at the same time, I think Serena didn't really want to say what she really wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, and, and even Naomi, I, I think it was both of them kind of was like they you know, they didn't really want to say what they really wanted to say because they weren't in the position to, you know, they couldn't, at least they felt like they couldn't anyway. And then Serena, especially because, you know, she's married to a Caucasian dude and, you know, she wasn't really say what she really wanted to say. Now she got to go back home and, and a man be like, looking like, Hey, what's up with that? You know, what's, What's that? You know, what's that all about? Yeah. So she's in a like a tight situation by by itself, you know, much more than Naomi is. 
it seemed uh, like I think the whole yeah, go ahead. It seemed like Serena Williams was definitely watching her words, and she yeah. tried to make this a sexism thing. <clears throat> to a certain degree, you know, when I looked at, it, I'm like, okay, your opponent is a woman. I, I I've never seen the umpires treat other women like this, so it's you specifically that they're after. And the thing is, I think yeah. it was much bigger than the match. I think that the match was fixed yeah. and rigged before it even started. It's like, okay, they, they, they've done this in sports many times, okay? They, they've oh, done yeah. this with Heinz Ward. And, you know, I said that Naomi Osaka got the Heinz Ward treatment, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But they do this. They did it with Yao Ming when they want – you know, it's a marketing tactic. Tactic when they want those those dollars to come from a specific country, they'll use they'll make somebody, you know, an honorary Asian or an honorary white person. They've done this in sports many times. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, they no do doubt it in, about it. They do it in baseball. You name it. So I think the match was rigged before, and you can tell that on Naomi Osaka's face, it was very overwhelming because during the match. This is not how she wanted to win, okay? She was doing well no, in the beginning of the match. And, you know, usually Serena, once uh, the match goes on, she catches up and she makes a comeback. You know, that's what she's known yeah. for. So, you know, she put the towel over the over her face. She was crying. She Very overwhelming for her. And then when they asked her questions after the match, she was like, hey, I don't, I don't even want to answer that right now. And then when she won, the fans booed her because, you know, in their minds, okay, this is bullshit. And, yeah. you know, that, that's a that's a terrible way to win. And I don't – that's terrible yeah. on both sides right there, you know. Yeah. And the, and the funny thing is, at the end of the match, Naomi didn't know what to say <laughs> at certain points. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't really know what to say because I'm watching the video – and she was like, uh, you know how if you ask somebody a question and they have to kind of like sit there for a couple of seconds and kind of kind of like, I don't know what should I say? You know, I wasn't expecting this type of question. She didn't know what to say, how to respond, <laughs> you know? And then Serena on the other side saying, no, we're not going to make this out to be something that it's not, that's, let's not get caught up in the, what these people are making it out to be. And so she tried to make it, Serena tried to be the bigger person. And I, I get that and I understand that. So, you know, I just think the whole game was toe up to the flow up. <laughs> you know, like toe up to the flow up. You know, you got to like, because first when they, before, even before the match, um, I heard people talking about it on Facebook and they kept talking about the Japanese girl, the Japanese girl. So I'm like, what a Japanese girl at? So exactly. I'm confused. Exactly. I'm like, cause so so they sent me the video afterwards. I said that girl ain't Japanese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now let, let, like, let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because you know we know you and I both know Asian culture, Japanese culture. But let's start with Western yeah. culture first. We know that people in the dominant society in the Western world don't view biracial people as their own. It's like, no, you're not no. one of us. They make it very clear. And you're only like an honorary white when, it, you know, they're trying to, you know, take down another opponent. You see that with the Floyd, yeah. like in, in, in the Floyd Mayweather Boxing. situation. Everybody, yeah. every opponent that he's ever fought, America usually roots for the person that's not American to go against yeah. Floyd. They did it with Conor McGregor. They did it with Manny Pacquiao. They did it with, um, well, Victor. Many times. Victor, I, he, many I, I, times. I believe he's American. I believe did it with he's Pacquiao. American. Yeah. yeah. All them guys, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we, and that's we've seen this in sports. Many times. So why would they, why would they, why would the media do this out West? Knowing, they know that like, hey, they're not for, they don't acknowledge people being biracial or anything. It's like, no, you like that one drop rule, you know, that that's worldwide. So why would the West do that? Well, first of all, they, it's, not, it's about the money. 
Mm-hmm. Not, that's the first thing. And plus, if they can't find nobody that's Caucasian to beat you, so they'll use somebody else to beat you and, and, and then profit from it. And then, because they already know that, I mean, being that she's, Jap- she's Japanese, she, even though she was, you know, raised in New York, I mean, the, the Japanese people don't look at her as Japanese. They just say, oh, that's your mom? Because they kept showing her mom on camera, but okay, that's it, whatever. That's cool from the game, but I mean, they don't, it's all about the money. And then, and more than likely, they'll have a little parade or some ceremony for her in o- Osaka or something like that. <laughs> and that's all for the money. That's just for show. Yeah. And, and, and hey, then, I get it. And people that don't know no better, people that are, you know, they've never been to Asia, they've never been to Japan, they think, oh, damn, they love us over there. They love, because, you know, you got a lot of dudes who are just seeking acceptance wherever they go. They're like, okay, they love us over there. But I say that she got the Heinz Ward treatment because Heinz Ward, if you guys don't know, Heinz Ward was a half black, half Korean wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He won yeah. he won the Super Bowl in 2006, and he got MVP. Yeah. He got MVP. But Heinz yeah. Ward, he was born in, in Korea, in Seoul, South Korea. The father was black. Yeah. He was in the Army, and the mother was Korean. Now, the whole city – was spitting on his mother, shitting on his mother, calling her every name in the book, throwing trash at her because she had a baby by a black man. Okay, so the father, because I, I saw in the special, Hans Ward was kind of giving props to the mother. You know, I got to thank my mother for getting me out of Korea. No, your mother didn't get you out of Korea. Your father no. with that American passport got you up out of Korea. Yo. If if your exactly. father if your father would have <laughs> left you strand, stranded out there with you and your your mother wouldn't have had a snowball's chance in hell to go to America. They'd have sent you to America, but your mother wouldn't have been going with you later on. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Exactly. So and so when he got over to America, he won MVP, won the Super Bowl. Now all of a sudden, Korea was like, "Hey, that's a win a win for Korea, Korea, Korea," and it was like. What? <laughs> like, so then yeah. he took a trip back over to Korea with his mother and they rolled out the red carpet for him. They followed him everywhere. They, you know, um, got him like a presidential suite. They had his name embroidered in, in the, the, the covers and yeah. the sheets. I mean, they were following him. Every, they rolled the red carpet out. They had him on the game show. He was up there crying on TV, like Rodney King. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you know I, 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 I used to be ashamed of being Korean, but man, like you know now I can proudly say that I, <laughs> I was a Korean. Now <laughs> he was cr- that cry, <laughs> that cry. So they gave Naomi Osaka the Heinz Ward treatment. They say, hey, no, yeah, you you winning in sports? Oh no. <laughs> Now this is a win for Japan. And I'm I was watching yeah. an interview on a YouTube channel. He was going around interviewing Japanese people in Japan talking about uh what's your reaction? Everybody's like, Yes, yes, we're proud of her. We're proud of her. This is a win for Japan. I'm like, that's saving face right there. And a lot of people don't understand yeah. saving face. Yeah, they don't. You know, it's like like man, they good actors, man. It, uh, they're they're gonna have they're gonna have something for her um, sooner, probably sooner than, than later. You know, it's all about the money. If, if they can find a way to generate some money, they'll get them sponsors to come in there. You know, she might get a a, a deal from one of them big sponsors over there. Probably one of them bear companies. You know, uh, who knows, man? That, that's what it's really all about. It's all about image. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, this was a PR move, a marketing tactic. To it, 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 it was just sad that it had to go out like that. And I think, yeah, I think she knew what was going on, but I don't. It looked like Serena didn't know what was going on. No, I think um, Naomi. I think she got caught off guard. Yeah, I think she 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 kind of uh, uh, figured out what was going on a couple minutes minutes later. Now Serena. I think, think she thought that, 
she wouldn't have got treated that way. I think that's that that I think that's what uh, that was the biggest thing. That was the biggest problem she had. She thought that since she's uh, you know, she'd been in the tennis game for so long, you know, then win all these matches, that and you know, how dare you, you you treat me this way? You know, it was that type of thing, you know. But but she's hey, always man, gotten he, treated that way. She, I know she's That's always the thing. so. I'm like, this ain't nothing new. <laughs> like, and then I know, like, and I don't know why they penalized her for they. You know, they they they. You know, that Australian cartoonist. You know, they exaggerated. Yeah, that was her just lips. some. Uh, they exaggerated her body. Yeah, that's jumping down. They always, they've, they've been doing that though. Yeah, they've been doing that with both of them. But you notice Venus and Serena. They they drew. Naomi Osaka as a white woman, as a Caucasian. Yeah, I woman. saw that. So that was very yeah. telling. But you know, they made a big deal of how she reacted. But dude, dude like for those that don't know, I've been watching tennis all my life because my dad he watches tennis. Okay, we used to watch uh, Jimmy Connors. Well, you know, Jimmy Connors that that was like the seventies and the eighties. So I, I wasn't old enough. Oh then. man. I saw the, you yeah. know, the, the highlights of Jimmy Connors, John McEnroe, Andre Agassi. I remember it was like back uh, in McEnroe. Oh yeah. It was like in back like in the eighties. Yeah. It, it was like back yeah. in like 1982, Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe, they actually had a match. Okay. And I guess some words were exchanged and Jimmy Connors, he walked over to John McEnroe. He hopped over the net, got in his face and started pointing, you know, his finger at him. And then John McEnroe shoved him. Then the umpires had to get in the middle and break them up. Oh, yeah. Then nobody. Yeah. I remember that. Didn't nobody get penalized for that? Then no. J- Jimmy Man, Connors. Dudes used to rain so much. Go ahead. Them dudes used to rain so much hell on the tennis court back then. <sighs> Man, people used to people used to tune in just to see what was gonna happen. Yeah, I remember <laughs> Jimmy Connors cursed out his mother on the court. <laughs> you know, like the, the, the John McEnroe, he's cursed out a bunch of umpires. He's broken tennis rackets. I remember one time he cursed out this umpire in French, but the umpire knew French, but he didn't think he knew French, and he got like yeah. penalized for that. But I don't think he got fined for that, you know. But it was every match. This dude, these three guys would act a fool. Andre Agassi, he was on dope. He was on meth, yep. throwing temper tantrums yep. on the court. So this is nothing new at all. And they find her for that. They didn't find these other cats for that, you know. So that, that <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, and even some of the, I saw some of the clips of. Uh, her, her and the Empire, you know, going, talking. I didn't really think, what was, I didn't really think anything she said was so offensive, to be honest. No. I mean, it's really. And then, and this is where, this is, she, she did say one thing that I totally disagreed with. When she said, you owe me an apology. I said, oh, no. <laughs> you ain't getting no apology. You're going to get over that. <laughs> no. If you got to ask for an apology, that's like asking for somebody to give you some respect. If you got to ask for it, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was wild. But let's, what I wanted to really focus in, because... I had to talk about the tennis match, but I wanted to talk about Naomi Osaka's background and Japanese culture. That's really what I wanted to focus on. Now, Naomi Osaka, um, she was born in Osaka (laughs) in Japan, okay? But what happened was her mother, when her, her mother's parents, her grandparents found out that their daughter was dating a black man. They were uh-huh. infuriated. They were super pissed. They were like, hell no. What the fuck? Words were exchanged. You know, the whole, you know, shebang. Yeah. And the mother said, okay, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. She didn't talk to them for over a decade. 
And salute to her father. The father of Haitian descent was like, look, man, this is something that I saw him do that I don't see a lot of brothers doing at all when they come to Asia because it's so selfish. Is when they see their kid like, damn, you know, this isn't really a good environment. My, you know, my wife's parents don't accept me. Of course, they don't accept my kids. I need to get them the hell up out of here. So what did he do when she yeah. was three years old? They got He got her up out of Japan, got her a passport, got her up out of Japan and raised her in America. So he, in his mind, he probably already had an exit plan before he yeah. even had kids. Like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm saving for a rainy day. He was like, hey, this is my time to get them up out, you know, give them a better life. What do you think about yeah. that? Hey, that's the thing. That's a good idea. It's a great idea. You I mean that should be top of mind? If you know, as you already know, nine times out of ten, being in Japan, Korea, or any of these other countries on the continent of Asia, that hey man, you know this might not go well. So you know who I, who said I was going to be here for the rest of my life? You know, mm-hmm. so hey, you should be. You should try to um, you kind of plan for situations like that. Of course, you can't plan for everything, but I mean, sometimes you're gonna have to adapt to certain situations that you might you might not foresee coming, you know. But hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Right, right, and that's very common on what uh, you know the father, the mother went through. You know, there's a lot of situ- you know, especially in other countries out here where, you know, these, these women, you know, a lot of them educated, they get with these brothers, and when they tell the parents who they're dating, they just go off. They don't approve of it. They don't want to speak to their daughter anymore. The daughter doesn't want to speak to them anymore. Or you know, there's a lot of racial slurs being thrown at the man. Yeah. You know, they hit the daughter upside yeah. the head with objects, talking about, oh, you, um, I, I hear them saying that you, uh, you betrayed me. You know, they, <laughs> they said, you betrayed me. I paid for school, this, that, and the third. And, and there, I mean, it, race is a big thing out here. And on top of that, oh, yeah. keeping that bloodline pure is a big thing out here. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. And you know the thing that um I got caught off guard when I was in Japan. I didn't really the 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 women don't tell you how they parent how they how their parents might feel about you. I didn't know. Mm. I didn't really know it was like that. And see, I'm I kind of got caught off guard. I'm like, man, what the hell? I mean, I'm in the Navy, man. I ain't really sign up for all this. You know, I just came over here to do my time and get out of here. And, you know, I ain't really, I wasn't really trying to get into no extra drama, you know, as, you know, you know what I mean? So I'm like, you know, I'm like, man, whatever, man. (laughs) That's how how I was thinking at the time. So a lot of times, a lot of guys get cut off guard because they just don't know because the woman don't tell them anything. Because they don't really like talking about stuff like that. They're trying to save face. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying to save face. And I see that all the time out here. And and, and I, I talk about I talked about this on a live the other day. I said, look, I don't care how fine the woman you are with, I don't care how educated she is, man. You know, you're not in a position to say, Okay, my my wife is a dime if, you know, you got her parents calling you every racial slur, every name in the book. That's not a, that's not a healthy situation at all. That's not a good position no. to put yourself in or to put your kids in. No, man. It's like, especially back in the day, you know, I was in my early 20s back then. I didn't really tolerate none of that. I cursed them. I cursed them out. Yeah. You know, I never really, I never had to do that, but I didn't really put up with all that nonsense because I always looked at it like, look, I ain't got to be over here. I just, you know, I go on the base and put on a transfer. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's how I was looking at it at the time. I'm like, hell, this bullshit. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. 
And, I, I didn't want to come over here in the first place. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? Like, she's considered a high fool. She's considered a high fool over there in Japan. Shout out to Tyler Hill. Tyler Hill, he's in the chat. He brought up uh, Ariana Miyamoto because the last video I talked about here. Ariana Miyamoto. See, when it comes to, like, sports, they'll make you an honorary Japanese. They'll make you an honorary Chinese. They'll make you an honorary whatever when it comes to sports. But when it comes to yeah. like beauty pageants, you know, uh, rep- you know, having a, a woman represent the face of a country, oh no, they yeah. have to be pure Japanese. They have to be pure Korean. They have to be pure Chinese. And when they had Ariana Miyamoto win Miss Japan, everybody went into a frenzy over in Japan. I lost it. I lost that game of mine. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and I, I had conversations with uh, Japanese, Japanese people about that, and they said, you know, they just did the same old thing, try to make it save face and be like, oh yeah, but she, they gave it to her, she won and everything. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the that's not the the responses that 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 she's been getting online though, you yeah. know. But yeah, I know, but you know, but the people that's in charge gave her the award, so. I guess it has to be okay. They'll deal with it. I say, yeah, they'll deal with it, you know. But so that's you know that's the response that I got. So I don't yeah. know, man. You know. Yeah, and and, and with <clears throat> with that man, like you know, with the whole saving face culture over there. That, that's the thing about Japan that a lot of people don't understand. Just because you put a camera, especially when you put a camera in their face over there. But hey, what do you think about Ariana Miyamoto? What do you think about Naomi Osaka? Oh, man, I, I think it's great. Yeah, I, because saving face, <laughs> it's like, look, my face represents the entire race of my people. So if I come across yeah. as aggressive or hateful or negative, then everybody's going to think that way about us. So they like, okay, I'll just tell you what you want to hear. And but you'll really never know how I truly feel, and that that, that not only goes with that, but that goes with dating, marriage, yep. relationships, business. Yeah, you know that that's all yeah. across the board. Like many across people board, will say, yeah. like man, when I'm over here in Japan, it's like I almost feel like I don't know what's on their mind. Like I, I can't tell no. half the time. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta figure it out. Yeah. You have to figure it out. If you stay around them long enough, you're going to have to figure out what's on their mind. You got to just pay attention to body language, <laughs> what they say. Half of it ain't going to be, um, ain't going to match up. You know, you, and you, let's watch what they do, their actions and their intentions. And that's when you'll be like, wait a minute. You know, this is, she ain't representing who she is, claiming she is. And she'll start doing stuff behind your back and, the the friends and then uh, what happens the friends usually they're gonna slip out and say something mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's what usually happens the friend gonna slip up and say something and you're yeah. gonna be like huh and then when they slip uh, up oh, and say okay. something when they slip up and say something they're like oh uh, oh uh, 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 you uh, get drunk up get drunk <laughs> up and slip up and say something you, you, <laughs> that's what you, usually happens you you know those noises they be my wife did what? Oh, uh, 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 I yeah. Go, I go yeah. now. <laughs> like, what? No way. Come yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's too late now. You have to be exposed. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, asking questions over there. You know, listening to some of those interviews where they're like, oh, yeah, 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 she's Japanese. She's, I don't care what people say. She's Japanese. This is a win for Japan. Man, dude, deep down inside, they really don't feel that way. They don't because no. you want to know how it really is over there. Talk to some of these half, you know, biracial kids over in Japan, and you ask them the yeah. real deal on how they're being treated. Ask them how – I've asked kids out here yeah. – I've asked kids in China. I've asked kids in Japan. Dude, it's 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 not as aggressive yeah. as out here, 
But, man, they talk about, man, you know, when I was a kid, they used to pick on me for the color of my skin. Then it's like, oh, when um, they got older and they like Le- Kobe Bryant or LeBron James, now it's like, oh, yeah, you, you cool now, <laughs> you know, in high school. Then when they yeah. get out of high school, yeah. you know, they can't find a job. So they either have to, uh, you know, get into Easy. sports to get out, get into entertainment or get in the sex industry. Yeah, yeah. They usually um, or they will try to get a job on base or some some U.S. um, uh, territory, something like that. That's usually uh, they. It's the opportunities are limited for them. And then some of them will come back, come to America. Mm-hmm. If they can, some, some of them will do that too. If they can, yeah, some of them will do that. But the the, the opportunities are limited for them. No doubt about it. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, they're not in corporate America at all in Japan. Oh, no. They know more Japanese than Japanese people. They know all the kanji characters and everything, but they're not in corporate America no matter how much education they have. The only jobs they're getting is the entertainment, sex industry, or, you know, they they doing janitorial work at overnight. Yeah. You know, overnight. Yeah. And they're like, look, don't you, don't you come out in this front. Yeah. You know, no. Uh, the, the, this uh-uh. this this company opens up at six. Your ass need to be gone by five, and not a minute later. Yeah, because I don't want these people yeah. knowing that you work over here. <laughs> yeah, they'd be it's, on it like that. Yeah, you know, they'd be on it like that. Yeah, I remember like um, you, if you if you go to Japan, you see women uh walking around with umbrellas when it's hot outside. Mm-hmm. But they don't want no t- they don't want to get no tan. Mm-hmm. They do I'm that like, out here. Well. Well, they'll come out of the building, the corporate building now, what, and put up the umbrella like it's raining outside. I'm like, what the hell? Uh, you know, so it's like, it's crazy, man. It's just, they kind of like living like, um, that they got that mindset like what, that people had in the 50s and 60s <laughs> and 70s. It's like, if you got a, uh, if, you, if they got, uh, you know what, you know what's crazy? I saw a woman, um, with kids, her kids, I guess she had black with kids with somebody. I don't know if they were from military or maybe she met the guy on her own. I don't know. But I was told that she was afraid to let the neighbors see her kids. Mm. So, so if uh, she was, she would always go home at a certain time when, the, when she thought the neighbors wasn't outside, you know, that that's, that's crazy. And I've been told by other guys too that dated some Japanese girls when, uh, when I was in the Navy that they felt that um, the girl would only um, bring them over to the house at a certain time at night because the neighbors and nobody could see or whatever, you know. So they felt like they were kind of being hidden, you know. Right. I've been told a lot of stories about this, you know. So I'm like, so then they asked me if I ever felt the same thing. And I said, yeah, I mean, one time I felt, kind of felt that too, you know, but it, it, it wasn't, but it happened to me where it's like, I'm in, we were inside her house and she kept looking out the window. So I'm like, what's wrong with this chick? So th- at this time, I'm like six months in Japan, you know, six months, probably less than six months. And she kept looking out the window. I'm like, what the hell going on? You know? So, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm really still new here. Mm-hmm. I don't know, really know anything. And she kept looking out the window back and forth. So, I'm like, man, I'm about to put my clothes on and get up out of here, man. You know? So, I said, hey, y'all, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to dip. I'm about to roll out. Right. And uh, she was like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, whatever. And, she, and, like, when she opened the door, the front door... He kept peeping outside. I'm like, yo, somebody coming? I'm like, man, I don't even, I don't even care at this point. I, I just want to leave and get up out of here. I'm <laughs> never coming back up here again. Yeah. You know, so, so I told him, dudes, I said, yes, I had kind of had a similar experience too, but I was leaving. I wasn't coming in. And then after about a year, about two years went by, once I understood how people function over there. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that that probably did happen to me, you know. <laughs> she probably was on that craziness, too. And plus, I got to know her much better after two years. 
And that's when I stopped, I stopped rocking with her. Cause I didn't like the type of person she was, you know, it was like, she was all about, it was all about, it's just, everything was just a show. Yeah. You know, it was like, and she's 35 years old at the time. And it's like, she's acting like a little kid. Basically she had the mind of a, a young girl, really, you know, it, she always had to think, thought about what people said or her friends, because uh, she had a friend that was a doctor. And this dude, he was a doctor, and the other girl was a teacher. And every decision she made, it was all about her friends and family included. So I'm like, man, I don't know. So I ended up cutting her off. Hell, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it's a collective mindset. That's why I've done the series yeah. on this channel talking about individualism versus collectivism. And, you know, <clears throat> that's something when you come from out west, you'll never understand coming over here. It doesn't matter how long you are out here because usually people from the west that, you know, in the – they have that individualistic mindset, especially black folks really have that individual. They don't give a damn what they say. If it makes them look bad, makes them look stupid. You know, people all over the people in other places are like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say that because my face is on this. The face of my people is on this. When I give an answer, yeah. when I make a decision, so people will hide their hand in many cases. And it's frustrating because when you're hiding your hand, we're used to people being outspoken, vocal, talking things through. People don't really talk things through out here. You know, no, they don't. people don't talk things through. Okay. It, it's I like, you know, you're trying to talk things through with me. You know, you, you're looked at as weak. You know, yeah, <clears throat> you know, it's like, I mean, there's a time for the group group decision or to do things as a as a collective, you know. But I'm I'm talking like simple decision decisions here. I'm not talking about life changing decisions. I mean, I mean, they'll take something so minor and make it seem like this is a this is gonna alter your life. I'm not even talking about that, but they turn it into that, you know? So it's like, you know, I mean, we have to rep. I think every man should represent. Every woman should represent, represent, you rep represent your last name. You're representing your family. You're representing your culture. I do think that's important, yeah. but, but, but now when it comes to the group thing, as far as uh, when you make decisions, I mean, most of these people that that they deem so uh, important into their life, I'm like, why are you even listen to some of these people? That's, I mean, I mean, some of these people haven't really haven't done very accomplished very much of anything, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm like, why are you listen to these people? And, I mean, and the, I'm in the family. Is is the family if the lease has the least amount of uh, pull as far as them making the decisions? It's always the friends and these other people, people that they work with. I'd be like, come on, you know. <clears throat> I mean, I, I could see if if they were re really worried about what the parents said or the sister and brother say, that would make much more sense than friends or people at the job to me but they don't look at it like that i'm like it's the people that they hang hanging around with at that given time basically that those are the people that they have to take into consideration as far as being with a guy and all this other crap right. <laughs> it's crazy right. it's crazy man because like when when and sometimes like man like when you come over here you really have the upper advantage when it comes to dating, but there's so many low self-esteem, low self-confident males. I can't call them men, males that come over here and you, you scoop up the trash from other people's communities that come over here because, you know, the, the, the prop 
the, the, the top tier women, they get with top tier men in their own communities because they keep that wealth and resources within their own communities. All the other trash, you know, okay, you're, you're for the foreigners, right? And then you get with <laughs> yeah. a woman that really has really nothing going for her. Her community's already ostracized her. And it's like, like you're, you're not, you're being belittled throughout the entire relationship. You're being belittled by her, her family. Like, why would you want to put yourself through that? So I have to give props to Naomi Osaka's father because he's like, look, man, you know, her family don't like me. Fuck them. You know, her, her family don't like their daughter anymore because they're with me because of the color of my skin. So he did what a man should do. And I got to get props to him because in his mind, he was probably thinking like, look, I'm going to stay out here for however much long I can. Okay. But when that happens, it's like, look, I'm putting the children first. You know, how, and, and a lot of people that come over here, brothers, they don't put their children first. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of brothers... They don't put their children first. They put themselves first. So they'd be like, nah, I'll just leave my kids. I ain't going nowhere. I don't care if her family's like that talking to me crazy. I'm, I ain't going nowhere. The kids suffer. The kids getting picked on in school. They're being treated differently from the teachers. You know, a lot of these males that have kids over here, they're not even teaching their kids English. <laughs> you know, they're not yeah. saving up for... You know, their kids to go to university. Like, how can you put your kids out here in the world and just be like, okay, just get it on your own? You know what I'm saying? You, you can't do that. It's not like America. It's totally different. Sad situation, man. I, I think a lot of guys just underestimate what, uh, how much it really takes to raise kids over there. That's what I think. Yeah. And, and that's what I really think what happens in, <laughs> um, when things do happen, they just don't know how to handle it. They can't figure it out. And they get all emotional and, you know, and, and, and everything just kind of unravels from there. <laughs> and, and that's where that's where the disrespect comes in because it's like, damn, you know, you, you're supposed to be the man in the relationship and you can't do anything. You're looking to me to do something about it. You can't do anything about it. Like you 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 don't have any solutions. The the only solution is like, nah, we're gonna stay out here and work through this shit. And it's like obviously you see that's not working. You know, and her father saw like, no, this isn't working. Okay. I'm going to do what I can to get my family out of here and get my look if he never brought his daughter over to America she wouldn't be where she's at right now period oh no she wouldn't be playing tennis no she doubt would, about she'll it she'll be playing she'll probably <laughs> she'll be playing I mean she'll be playing some sort of a different kind of tennis where balls are going back and forth yeah she, she yeah. she'll be yeah. playing tennis or she'll be swinging yeah yeah because yeah, most of these uh, women out here get into the sex industry yeah, a lot of them do, man. A lot of them do, man. You know, that's that's the thing. You know, I'm willing to say that a lot of these guys that get with some of these um, Japanese girls that's in the military or, or moved over there for, that, that got a job for whatever reason, a lot of these girls probably have been in the sex industry Yeah, are still in once they meet them. And a lot of these guys, without them even knowing... They took a lot of these girls out of the sex industry. <laughs> they probably didn't, without them even knowing. Uh, I've seen that you know? out here. I've seen that. I've seen that out here in Thailand too. Like you see, uh, yeah, these women, they're, they're, they're a free hoe, and that's the worst kind of hoe. <laughs> there is a free hoe, you know, just a slut, you know, because she's still trying to find herself. She'll know who she is. She just it ain't even about money. You just want to get dug out by every man yeah, on this planet. <laughs> yeah, they just like sex. Yeah. They, just, they, they, they call them nymphos. They uh, just like sex. That's all. A freakazoid. Yeah. That's what they want. Freakazoid. Oh, <laughs> a freakazoid. You know, <laughs> and you see these freakazoids. They'll get. You know, men will propose to them. I've seen this one girl. Yeah. I mean, she's the biggest slut out out there in Pattaya, right? 
And this, I swear this woman done been, uh, she done got engaged to be married like four or five times. You know, I never messed with her. I just kind of see it out there because my homeboy told me about her. And I'm like, oh, okay. okay. He's like, yeah, she's engaged again. I'm like, isn't that the same girl you was talking about? He's like, yeah. I'm like, again? Then again. Then again. So, I mean, these dudes are, are wifing up the holes out here. You know, and these women aren't honest yeah. because they know, they see your simpish heart. Like, man, I can't tell you what my body count is. They see, and, and nobody yeah. in the community is going to tell you her body count neither because they don't want to talk to you. No. Like, just get her off our hands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's pretty much. There's a lot of that goes on, man. You know, it's a lot of these guys, a lot of times, a lot of these guys get caught up because it's the sex. The yeah. sex, is, you know, the sex is sex is powerful, man. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> it's a really a powerful thing. It can be used for negative and positive, though. You know, it just depends on the the, the, the intent of the person. But that's why a lot of guys, you know, are probably more than likely they inexperience when it when it comes to having a, a, a lot of sex or just good sex. Well, you know, and just in general. So a lot of them be like, you know, they don't want to let that experience go. So they say, they be like, yeah, I want to, I, I, I asked her for engagement, man. I'm like, oh, no, man, you just met her six months ago. Man, you see, you see grown men <laughs> crying over the sex. I'm like, yeah. you, you crying over the sex? <laughs> you can't really talk to them, no sense in them, in, into them either. Yeah. It ain't going to work. And then when you ask questions, you're like, hey, man, like, damn, is that good? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, how, how old is yeah, this man, woman, man? Yeah, man, it's good. I was like, how old is this woman, man? Man, she don't look like it, but oh, no. She be like 30-something most of the time. They be, they she 30-something. They be saying she 40-something. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Sometimes, yeah. Ain't you about 24? Yeah, but I mean, she, she don't look like it. <laughs> I'm like, oh. God. Yeah, so he's he's a youngster. She's older, older woman. She turned the young lad out, and that's you know that's that's a pretty common thing. Yeah. That's pretty common, I would say. You know, a younger guy meets older woman. Older woman have more experience, of course. She's older, and the younger dude, you know, he's in his mind, he's like. Yo, man, I just banged this. I just caught a, a young, an older thing, an older woman, man. I got an older woman underneath my belt. I'm going to go back and tell my buddies, you know. And then that's how it starts off, though. And then it progresses to, man, I want this all the time. Then he's like, man, you ever been married before? She's like, no. I'd like to, I'd like to marry you. <laughs> you know, it's not just that it starts. <laughs> Bro, brothers are brothers are real simpish over here because they they see the trials and tribulations they go through in the dating scene over here. So they just like fuck it, I'll take anything at this point because they think that American women are the worst in the world. You know, they, they yeah, think I've heard a lot of guys say that. They think they're the worst ever. They come over here and they're like, damn. Damn, you know, they it's like, damn, this ain't no better over here. So they just take anything. Oh. And when I mean anything, they literally take anything. They, they'll they'll take Yeah. You know, they, 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 they'll take the, the neighborhood slop and, and put a <laughs> ring on it. <laughs> yeah, um I I get a lot of comments all the time. Guys be thinking that women in America are the worst. I said, No, that's not true. I said, You need to do a little bit more traveling. Yeah, you know, you gotta realize that, man. We ain't got it bad over here. <laughs> and I said the best form of tra the best form of learning is traveling. It's to experience by traveling. You can't you can't sit up and watch an anime, or, you know, watching people on the internet lie to you or save face. You watching videos are like, man, like you, you see, uh, somebody who's never traveled is in. Uh, Arkansas or uh, uh, Montana or uh, Idaho right now looking on YouTube watching matches right watching interviews of the match and they're like yeah, no no we 
we we she's Japanese. She's one of us. We support her. And there's a tear rolling down the eyes like, damn, I didn't know it was like that. I'm over here in Wyoming, you know, getting shitted on by these women in the trailer parks. And I didn't know it was yeah. like that over there. You know what? I'm going over there because it's much better. Look how friendly they are. And you don't understand culture. Like, they save face over there. I mean, I've said it a million I'm times. Down. But I'm, I say it often because I want to get it through the thick skulls of a lot of people out west. People will tell you what you want to hear out here. Deep down, they'll be, they be like, man, yes, yes, I'm down for you. I'm down for you. I'm riding for you. You want to us. You want to us. And in the moment y'all part ways, they're like, look, man, I'm going to block this motherfucker. Who the fuck he think he is, man? He ain't one of us. We don't like him. Breath yeah. stinking. Skin dark. He ugly. <laughs> he I'm looked telling. dusty. I'm, I'm telling. Then, I mean, if you look at the woman, you'd be like, damn, she, she's bad. I mean, from head to toe, hair done, nail done, nice feet, everything. But, but it's, but when you leave, you'd be like, that's when your uh, intuition kicks in. If you use it, your intuition will kick in and be like, you know, something ain't right about that woman. You know, even though she looks nice, something ain't right. I just can't put my finger on it. <laughs> you know, and that that happened that happened to me a, a many times over there. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's like that one. It's just something ain't right. I mean, she talked good, looked good. Uh, she she played a part perfect. But this is but as time go on, you know, they say. The leopard always shows its its, its spots. <laughs> yeah. and, and you want to know something, man? It's like with 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 women out in the West, right? I'm like, okay, if if you got it bad in America, what's the difference in Japan? Like, wh- I'm like, what's the? If you think about it, it's it's much worse when it comes to if you're just going over there for the women, because like in America, people are like, man, you get it ain't number of hood rats and, and raggedy women over here. And then when you get one, she's fucking everybody. And then if you get her pregnant and having kids, now you got to pay child. I'm like, that's the same thing that goes on in Japan. What, what do you mean? That's the yeah. same thing. You get the ugliest, dirtiest woman in, in the community. You can't even connect with her because she don't know any American inside jokes. She don't like communication is not all about knowing the language. It, it, it's no. like it, it's it's the, the 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 metaphors, the similes, the inside jokes, the expression, the phrases. You know, it, th- that's what communication is. Being able to, to communicate where you understand each. You don't understand each other even if you do speak the same language out here. So you can't follow her. She follows a different set of rules. You don't know the area well. You get her pregnant. If she says, "Look, uh, you know." Whatever, I got a kid. I don't want to be with you no more, and I don't. You're, you're never gonna see your kid anymore. You're like, what? Nah, I'm going to court. I'm gonna see my kid, and what the judge is gonna do? Cause this is what this is how it is in Japan. They'll say, okay, yes, the mother gets full custody, and I hear, I, I say this by law, you're not allowed to see your kids, but you have to pay child support. Now, if the kid wants to come seek, you know, seek out, seek you out and see where you are and be a part of your life when they hit 18 or whatever, then so be that, that, that's, you know, that's on the, the child's free will when they're an adult. But while they're a kid growing up, no. That's how, and that's even worse than the system in America. In America, you pay child support, yeah. but they grant you the right to see your child. In Japan, you have to pay child support, but they say, no, you're not allowed to see your kids. And this is everybody. Yeah, yeah, the laws are uh, biased, uh, uh, and they give uh, women the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you're a foreigner, you don't, you don't, you you don't get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to almost anything, anything that I can think of. You know, so a woman can lie all day long because she knows that the judge and the laws. Is biased against foreigners. 
She already know. I haven't every Japanese woman I've met, they already know this. So it's not like it's a secret, but she she might not tell you this until if something happens, that's when you find out. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. There's a lot of stuff that happens over there. It's set up over there. The women don't tell you shit until <laughs> it happens after the fact. And I'll be like, hey, why come you didn't tell me that a couple of weeks ago? I say, oh, oops, you didn't ask. You didn't ask. <laughs> but I didn't know. How was I supposed to know to ask? I didn't know it exists here. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, you know, so it's that type of deal. You'll never, you know? <laughs> know it ex- you'll never know it exists until it bites you in the ass because you're not Japanese or you're not Chinese. It's like, yeah, they don't so, share information with you. <laughs> they don't. So I'm like, I'm at a disadvantage being over here, really. I, I don't know. After about two years, I was like, I've been over, I've been here for two years, man. I still really don't know what the hell's going on over here. I mean, I only know based on certain things, based on my experience. But I know there's another side that I haven't experienced yet either. Yeah. You know? Yeah. See, in America, you could be someplace for two years and figure it out within a couple months because people, you know, they, they you know, people, people in America, talk. they 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 can't keep their mouth shut for nothing. You know, they just oh, no, no, out. they can't. They got to let it out. I mean, that takes a skill. To, to have the, the level of patience and the level of discipline like people over in Japan to keep things Ooh. to yourself, that takes a lot of discipline. Not, I mean, the average, you are insane if you could do that in America. Exactly. <laughs> that makes them insane. I was thinking about, I did a video about this and what, what kind of pertaining to this uh, was about unfit women. And hood rats. And I was saying that the women in these other countries, it's hood rats in other countries too, as well. They just don't call them hood rats. They just say they, they're no good. They're yeah. unfit. They're not good for marriage or whatever. You know? And I said to, exactly. And I said to, in order to hide stuff and, you know, keep stuff to yourself, it takes a special person to be that way. You can't be normal. You have to be insane. <laughs> you yeah. can. Yeah, and, and the environment we come from, it's not like in the in the bottle things up that long. That puts a lot of stress on you. That's not good for your health. Exactly. You know, so no. Out out here in Asia, man, look, these women they're holding on to certain things that they're not going to tell you the moment you date them, and then. You don't find out till long after. You like, damn, like, yeah, we got these kids, and I'm finding out that you used to set, you know, be a prostitute. You used to bang a bunch of other foreigners like that. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you know. But it, by then, it's too late, you know. But <laughs> yeah, t- kids are already here, and y'all done married. And... <laughs> In America, so what you, do you, do? you know what you're getting before you get into it. It's just, that's why a lot of times yeah. when stuff happens, the people's like, I, I don't know, I, like, I don't feel sorry for that person. They knew what they signed up for. Yeah. <laughs> they knew what they signed up for. So, you know, out here in Asia, it, it, it's totally different. Like, uh, I, I was uh, talking to this one chick like, a, like about a week or two ago, and... You know, I found on a date, man, she had a kid, and I was like, yeah, no, uh, I'm good. But I just kept on with the conversation. I'm like, uh, so you used to party? She was like, yeah. I'm like, do you used to do drugs? Man, she says she's done every drug imaginable. And Jesus Christ. I, I mean, so, so I'm like, oh, so weed? She was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, coke? She said, yeah, yeah. I said, meth? She said, yeah. I said, crack? She said, yeah. I said, pills? She said, yes. Everything. I was like, I said, bye. I said, I got to go. Damn. I got to go. <laughs> and then she was only like 22. So she did all this like, wow. you know, when she was like in high school. I'm like, you smoke. I'm like, who smokes crack anymore? 
You don't just like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they they still doing it. They still doing it. No, nah, but I, but that take. I'm not talking. See, I, I'm not talking about <laughs> you. You know who does crack? You know, I, I'm talking about a young, you know, person, cute, at going to oh, high no, school. They, they're not smoking they doing crack. It. Oh yeah, they are, bro. They are today. Man, so they they be yeah. like, hey man, you, how many rocks you got? I'm gonna smoke them rocks in a glass pipe. Yeah. You ain't seeing young folks smoking rocks in a glass pipe. They might take in those same chemicals in a different form, like lean. It's not like, you know, these kids are asking for heroin, but they get it in the form of, you know, uh, lean, promethazine, codeine. That's like liquid heroin. Well, I don't know. But uh, I, mean, I don't know how they. A seventeen-year-old today you... smoking a crack rock out of a glass dick? Nah. <laughs> nah. I don't know how they smoking it. I don't know how they how they like how they how they smoke it. But I know some of them are doing it personally. Uh, you know, I've never actually been there and witnessed them smoking. Of course not. <laughs> but I know some of them that are on crack. How old are they? You know, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure people are. I mean, there's always gonna be yes, a pop, but I'm talking about like the average kid that's out. Oh here. no, no, not the average. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no. Like, see, this is no. some like the number one drug of choice out here in Thailand is meth. <laughs> really? I yeah. didn't know that. Damn. It's it's meth and pills. I was I was thinking it'd be cocaine. No, it, it's they, they. That's why. And um, then, and uh. I think it'd be. I would think it'd be uh, cocaine and and um, ecstasy. That's what I would think. Nah, because out here, like that's why you hear the the nickname icy a lot, like icy, nah, icy da, icy this or icy that, and really ice is that like icy that that that's meth. So they're letting people know, like, yeah, you know, I, I smoke. Ice. Oh yeah, they used to. Yeah, they used to call it that. They used to call it here. Call it that like fifteen years ago. Here, they used to call it ice. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but, but that that'll be the names out here. And then I'm like, y'all smoking yeah. meth? They be cooking up in yeah. these uh these these little uh in the forest in the forest out here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit is it's dangerous. Hell yeah. So they gotta have it. You gotta you gotta have some space. You gotta have some land to, for a lab like that. You yeah. know. <laughs> I'm like, yo, all right, but I I know, uh, you know. Let, let me not go there. <laughs> let me not go there. <laughs> let me not go there. <laughs> uh, yeah. But my thing is like, it, it, it's it's. I preach this all the time, man. Travel because you want the experience, not because you want the women. Because the women, the best women are in America. And somebody yeah. tried to argue with me the other day, and he contradicted himself in an email. I started to make a video on his dumb ass, because then he, he started name-calling me. And I'm like, oh, no, uh -huh. I'm about to put you on Front Street, buddy. Like, <laughs> you just contradicted. You. First, he said, man, I don't... He was shitting on black women in the beginning. Then he said... That's why I like uh, Asian women as submissive, subservient. The best ones are not in America, they're in Asia. And I told him, dude, the best women are in, a in, a in America. You've never traveled. But he said he was in the military. Then he started backpedaling, talking about, no, yeah, my wife is Asian, but my first choice has always been black, and I met her in America. And I'm like, you're, you're a fucking liar because you just sat here talking about the best ones were in, in Asia and fuck American women. And now, so look, the best women are in America. If you want to travel, you can travel. Yeah. Can you meet a good woman over here? Absolutely. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm not, but the, the pickings are very slim for that. And some dudes, yeah. their heart is so bitch made. They're not even man enough to really be in a relationship with a lot of women over here. They're too broken. And, a, and these women, they like, yeah. damn, this dude is so broken. Oh, uh, let me trick out, you know, let, let me, <laughs> let me. They don't got the discipline. Yeah, let me finesse this simp right here. <laughs> yeah, they don't got the discipline. I did a video yesterday talking about discipline. A lot of people didn't like that video. Why? Why? <laughs> some, uh, a lot of people, some, a lot of people liked it, and then some people didn't, because I'm talk basically talking about them being the. 
the sucker that they are. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, I meet a lot of see, suckers that, out here. Yeah, it's, it's, they say a sucker born every minute, but I think a sucker born every second now. <laughs> I think two suckers are born every second. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you're gonna travel the first thing you should you should never travel for women that's the first thing you know that's that's just not that's the wrong mindset to have if you're gonna travel travel if you meet you can meet women you can meet decent women anywhere it's just, it's gonna be dependent upon who you are as a man you know i mean but if you go to a place like um a big tourist place you know it's gonna be a lot of Fast women, sex, drugs, that's pretty common, just like any big city, you know, for the most part. But if you don't have the discipline, you're going to always fall and get sucked in, you know, because, I mean, people are struggling in these big cities. A lot of, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people live in, in between paycheck. And a lot of people are just struggling, yeah. you know. So, you, so you, even, so knowing that, you're going to meet people that they're going to try to hustle you. They're going to try to fast talk you. Yeah. They're going to try to, you know, play you. But if you don't have a discipline, you're going to always get caught up. Yeah. And, and the, the, the very same thing that they move out of the big city that they live in, they come over here and move into the big city and, and run into the same problems, but they run into the same problems but more. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you live in because... L.A. or you live in New York City, and you're like, man, you know, these people, they, they, they just, none of them have any empathy towards each other. Nobody cares about each other. All they care about is money. People are disrespectful. They're always harming each other, talking shit to each other. You know, they're running each other over in the street. They got somewhere. I'm like, dude, these are very expensive cities. And the rent, yeah. I mean, Fifteen hundred dollars a month is a hole in the wall. It's the same thing over in Tokyo, but you know the pay is different. They're getting paid a lot less over there, and they think the same way. I don't have time to really get to know you or care about your feelings or your emotions or care about what happened to you in the past with your parents or whatever happened when you were born by a single mother. It's like they don't care about none of that. They, they're yeah. like, look, do you got a bankroll? They're trying to. They're trying to make rent. Yeah. At the end of the month, yeah. you know they are they they were in a bad situation before you met them. Yeah. It's, so, it's you know, like, so it's like if 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 you're a guy living in America, if you haven't dealt with your problems over here, and you try to go someplace else, if that's probably not going to work out. You see, at the end of the day, I, I, this is how I see it. It starts with you, mm-hmm. and end with you. Mm-hmm. That's really how it is, man. Yeah. You know, so. You know, I mean, any in any social environment, it's really the, the it's it, you just have to lead, bro. You have to just be the best you can be at any given time, and that and even with that, you still gonna have some bumps in the road from time to time. Exactly. That just come that just come with the game. You yeah, know, you're yeah. not gonna be like 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 you know clean clean. If you're in the if you're in the dirt, you ain't gonna be end up clean. <laughs> and, and and the thing is, like, if you're trying to, especially when you tell your problems to women out here, they don't care because it's like, look, my problems are much worse than yours. You actually have a passport that allows you to travel anywhere you want to go. You can stay there for ninety days at a time. You can leave the country and come back in the country in the same day and. Renew that 90 days if you want to stay here. You can start a new life anywhere you want to go with that passport. They looking at it like, look, I'm ostracized in my community. I can't go nowhere. I got to deal with whatever yeah. comes over here. And in their minds, they're looking like the trash from everywhere else is coming over here. <laughs> so it's like you have it much better than them and they listening to you looking at you like, okay, you're just a big old baby. You're a big child. You know, you haven't manned up yet. Yeah. You haven't dealt with the problems back home yet. You know, you, yeah. you haven't gotten over whatever. And then when it, they, they deal with you because they feel like, okay, I have to deal with this simpish overgrown adolescent. And then when it comes time, when they're like, damn, you know, I really need this person to really step up and be a man it's like you don't 
you know, a lot of guys out here, they don't know how to do it. And then the children suffer. And you're thinking like, well, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my parents, they didn't give a shit about me and blah, blah. And really, they're, they're traveling throughout their lives trying to look for people that they can get over or look for people that accept them or look for people that they can fuck over. And you haven't yeah. managed to really get over on anybody from your community because most of these guys that come over here, they were too soft. They didn't have the heart to really stand up to anybody in their community. Or if they did, they got their ass whooped. All right, so they stood in the house. Um, they they couldn't get over on any other groups of people, in you know in America. So they got over on them a couple of times, and they felt like okay, this situation really isn't fair. So they come over here looking for you know I just go across the world and, and look for acceptance, and you come over here like no motherfucker, we don't accept you neither. You ain't shit. You, you not no, no. <laughs> No, and and it's like, damn, I can't get over on the people here. I can't get it over on my woman because it took me a long time to even find her, to find a yeah. woman that wanted to deal with my ass. So what do they do? It's like, hmm, I can get over on my kids because they're in a position where they need me. They're not even old enough yeah. to work. They're not even old enough to do anything, to move out, nothing. And these are the people that I could just get over and fuck over and it feels good to them. It feels good to them that they left their children, you know, astray and to be a bastard. You know, it feels good to them that they can say, yeah, yeah. what you going to do about it? We can take this outside. But you didn't want to take it outside with your peers growing up. You didn't want to take it outside with right. everybody who punked you back in America. <laughs> so, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, a wise man once told me, People will only do what's been done to them, mm -hmm. you know? And then, and this is why I say trust in most relationships don't really exist. Because in most cases, when you meet someone initially, you know, they sizing you up, you know, and they come through the door not telling you everything that you should know about them. And they're trying to, it's kind of like a, no, a negotiation. Like it's like, 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 like a business deal, but it's a bad business deal. In most cases, one person is, is listening to the woman in most cases. And she's saying, trying to say everything that she thinks he wants to hear. And he knows that, you know, it's something missing, but he don't know what it is. And, you know, she might be, you know, she, she might be playing the part from head to toe, you know, and, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like being on the dance floor, dancing with a woman and you'd be like, okay, y'all going back and forth, back and forth. And then after a while, a couple of weeks go by and the guy finds out that, Hey, she, she hit this. You hit this from me. You didn't tell me that in the beginning. And she'll kind of like, you know, justify why she didn't tell him and try to make a, a joke about it. And now she wants him to accept the lie that she hid from him because she's still trying to position herself as, you know, as a respectable woman, you know? So it's kind of like, it, it, it's no trust there. It can't be no trust there. Because you already know that as soon as the the average person walk through the door, they they're not they're not representing who they really are. So they it can't be any trust, right? You know. So it's like a bad business deal in most cases. Yeah. There's <laughs> now, actually now we, every, go ahead. Now every now every once in a while, it's rare you meet somebody that actually want to get to know you just because of you. But that's very rare. That's rare. I haven't met a lot of people that like that. Every five to seven years, I'll meet one person that's like that. They just want to get to know me. It ain't got nothing to do with what, 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 where I've been or who I know or what I accomplished or none of that. They're just curious to know about me. But that's very rare. 
You, you want to know something? There's a listener right now. I'm not going to say his name, but uh, he's tuning in right now. And he was telling me about what he does when he goes out on dates. And uh, I think he, because he's, he's a young black male, and, you know, he was talking about how he takes, you know, when he goes on a date with Asian women in America. And he talks about, like, yeah, man, you know, so... You know, I get extra fly, extra fresh. I'm like, okay. And, you know, I I, I take it to a real nice restaurant. I take it to, uh, you know, I, I, I take it to, uh, what did he say, uh, the Cheesecake Factory. You know, I tell a joke. Okay. I do this. I do that. I do this. And I'm like, no, no, dude. And then he's like, but there's never really a connection, and it doesn't really go past that. And, you know, I'm always trying to – figure them out and I'm like no I'm like the thing oh, is no. the, the thing is man is is when you try women have a sixth sense women have talked with more men than men have talked with women because they don't have to do anything if a woman is exactly. attractive men are trying to get with them all day every day women can sense yep. when you're just you're trying too hard and it's very disingenuous because like, I'm not really getting yeah. to know the, the real you. I don't know you. You're just trying to impress me. You're hiding something. This is not how you act all the time. This is not what you do all the time. And they've, by the time she got to you, she had already met 50 other guys that did the same thing and shitted on her. And they're like, damn, this is a totally different person later on. So when they see that with you, and they're, by the time they're in their 20s, their early 20s, they're like, no, I, I already know this game. No, I, I'm going to eat my little free meal and I'm going to keep it pushing. You know, so most people, when they meet you, it, there's an agenda and they're putting their best foot forward. OK, when you're being yourself and you're being 100 percent honest, there's nothing you need to backtrack and be like, well, this is this is how you met me in the beginning. When you start off high and high rolling or whatever, you got to keep that high rolling energy throughout the entire relationship. So when it comes down to be yeah. like, hey, why don't we just go to this Starbucks? It's like, you know, she thinking like, look, you ain't, I thought you it didn't seem like you were some Starbucks type of dude to me. <laughs> and I'm not a Starbucks type of woman no more after you didn't did all this for me in the beginning. So some people, like, they, they, they're trying to get theirs in the beginning. And like you said, some people, they don't really want to get to know you, especially with brothers. It's like, look, this shit ain't working. In my community, nobody wants to touch me. These other groups of people don't want to touch <laughs> me. You're the only fool out here that is willing to sleep with me in bed. No matter how big I am, no matter how old I am, no matter how many kids I have, you're the only fool in this world that'll do that. So, I, I mean, I, I still need my fix. Pause. My She still needs her dick fix every other night, and that's all you're there to do. Now, as far as running shit or being the man of the household, she ain't trying to hear none of that. And she knows that you're going to follow her rules because, like, where else you going to go? Where else you going to go? And me, I, I'm like, bitch, I'm going to go home. That's where I'm going to go. Okay. <laughs> you think this yeah. you, you think the pussy out here phase me? Bitch, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> exactly. You gotta be like that. Yeah. yeah, man. It's 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 been times where I think when I was in my twenties, I, I was living with a woman <laughs> for like yeah, probably like six. I don't even think it lasted for six months. Mm. And she started acting a fool, you know, just getting like attitude and being disrespectful. And I thought, I think she thought that that I was kind of locked, locked in and wasn't gonna go nowhere. And I told her, I said, you know what? I'll just leave. <laughs> and she was like, Well, where you going? I said, All right, about that. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I think, and then I, like I, pack, I, I was packing my bags and I left, and she was kind of shocked. Like, you know, where he going at? Where he going? I'm like, I, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember, I remember one time. Uh, 
I remember one time I went on a date with this girl out here in, in, in Bangkok. We went to the Imperial World. That's like uh, North Central, all right? So we go to Imperial World to this mall, and, you know, I meet her upstairs at this little, at a McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? The McDonald's was upstairs. And, you know, I just, you know, I get my little ice cream or whatever. It's, it's only, uh, it's ice cream is real cheap. It's like 30 cents out here, right? So we sitting down, she gets up, I'm like, you know, I'm not paying for this. She was like, okay, no, 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 so it's cool, it's cool. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. So we're talking, and I'm asking her questions, and she's fine as hell. Now, looks-wise, this woman was a nine, hands down. I'll show you a picture of her. She fine. I got a picture, but I, it's, it's, uh, it's on my iPad. It's on my iPad, so I don't have it on my computer right now. Okay. But, but she... <clears throat> I asked a question. I'm like, do you got kids? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, th- th- this is over. Th- like, So the date was already over, you know, <laughs> when she said that. But I, I'll be I'll, I'll be cool, and I'll have a conversation yeah. with her. So she was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I used to live in Pattaya. I used to, you know, work at the bars over there. Just I was a bartender. I never slept with nobody. I'm like, okay, that's bullshit. But I said, uh, oh, no. do you know, do you know this guy? And this guy, he's a foreigner, and he was like, oh, yeah, 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 I know him. She said, he likes to fuck. I said, what? She was like, oh, what? oh, oh. She was like no, oh, nothing. No, I'm like, no, 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 what you, I, I thought I heard you say something. She's like, oh, no, 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 nothing. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I really don't care because this shit is over. Like, it's been over when she told me you had a kid, right? Even though you fine, yeah. you know, I, I would smash one good time because you fine. But I was like, nah, yeah. nah, I'm I'm cool now. I'm cool now. So then we upstairs, so I'm walking down the stairs, and, and she's telling me, she was like, you know what, before, I didn't like black guys at all. I didn't like black guys, you know, at all. I didn't want to talk to them, nothing. But then, you know, some of my friends, I heard they were, like, dating black guys. So I gave it a try, and man, you know, whoa, I was like, Whoa, I, I'm never going. I'm on I only like black guys oh, now. Boy. And I'm like oh, boy. and in my mind yeah. I, I'm like, okay. I'm like, oh, cause I'm like, it's already over. I'm walking out the mall right now, right? But the, you know, these malls in Thailand, they're like 15 stories high. So it's taking me a while to get out the mall. And she's right there. She yeah. was like, Yeah, every time I see a black man now, it's like, ooh, chocolate man. I'm like Okay. Oh, so, God. so then she she she's looking at me and she's like, "Damn, he's he's just you know he he he's not impressed." You know, she was like, really? "What?" She was like, "Hey, you know the movies are here. You want to go see a movie?" I was like, "Nah, I don't want to see no movie." She so she was thinking of she was like, "Let me try this one last trick." She tried the whole, "I'm just gonna." walk into a store without saying anything trick to see if I'll get him to follow. I'll get him upset that I just walked away and went into the store. I seen her walk into a store, a clothing store, and I kept walking. I I mean, I didn't even miss a beat. I just kept walking. So then I was outside waiting for the cab on the sidewalk. She's calling me. She's like, Hey, 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 where'd you go? I was like, I'm outside. She was, so she's running outside. I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm catching a cab right now. I'm going home. Well, what do you want to do after this? I'm like, I'm going home. And she, she campaigned hard. Yeah, she could not believe that it's like, damn, he don't want this, he don't want this juice box. Like, uh, yeah, she's exactly. like I'm sitting here fine. <laughs> I got all the brothers in a frenzy when I go to Pattaya, but this dude. I don't know what to do. He has self He has self-respect. I never met him, anybody like that. So then a couple months later, my friends from America, they come over, right? So I'm out. They like they go to Pattaya. And we go in this club. And he goes, damn, that girl been staring at you the whole night. Won't you go holler at her? I'm like, who? He, he points. And, and it's, it's that girl. That I, I went on that day with, yeah, <laughs> and she's just staring at me the whole time. I'm like, dude, I already know her. I don't want to talk to her. You're like, 
what? He goes, you hit that? I'm like, no, nah, I didn't hit that. I don't want it. He was like, what? Like, he couldn't believe that. He's like, come on, man. Like, that woman is a dime. She's fine. You don't want that? I said, nah, you can have her. She ain't shit. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of guys are like that. <laughs> they, just can't, they just can't believe that she's so fine that you, you automatically supposed to want to hit it. That's not the case, man. Yeah. If you're, if you're a sucker, see, that's how suckers think. <laughs> <laughs> a sucker will sleep with a woman just because she's fine for nothing, basically. Yeah. I'm like, come on, man. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta be better than that out here. You gotta be better than that out here, man. And then on top of that, she had a, like her child was with a black guy from Hungary. I'm like, damn, you messing with a dude, a black dude from Hungary? <laughs> Hungary? Okay. Yeah. And, and she had came up that the father wasn't really in the kid's life at all. And I'm just like, okay, like I, I'm, I'm like, hey man, you know, I'm, I'm gonna finish my ice cream as soon as I'm done. I'm walking out the door, out the mall, and. Yeah. Cause you know how when dudes when they walk in with their girl, is you know they have a girlfriend or a wife, that's like the a man's biggest pet peeve, and, and you know they just walk out, they, they they don't say anything, they'll just walk into the Forever Twenty One store or whatever, or they will just walk right into the Gucci store, and they don't say anything. It's like you figuring out trying to find where they at, right? And I figure like that that's just a tactic to kind of get you on a leash, you know, get you on a string to have you following her. You see, women are playing games 24 seven of the day. Everything they do is just not by coincidence. That shit is tactical. What they're doing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> mostly, mostly. Yeah. You know, most, most women have to, to be strategic because they know they can't. It just ain't, you know. They 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 don't think they're enough. They don't think they're enough. They don't, they don't got the confidence. They don't got the swag, the charm, the charisma. <laughs> so they feel like I have to hold stuff back. You know, I have to be strategic. I have to, you know, do something that, that you know, kind of like I have to campaign. I have to test him out. I have to try to see how he's thinking or what he's thinking or what's on his mind. What type of woman I got to pay attention to see what type of woman he likes when we're out in public together, who he's looking at, you know, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And a lot of you guys out there, you need to learn how to remove the emotions out of, you know, uh, any situation that you get into business relationships, yeah. friendships. You need to ask yourself, does it make sense? A lot of brothers that come over here, their whole thing is they want people to like them and to desire them and to feel sorry for them and to feel sorry for their struggle. Newsflash, don't nobody give Bro. a shit about your struggle anywhere you go in the world. So to think that people come, nope. you're going to come over here yeah. like, nah, nah, people like us. People like, no. No, they don't. If somebody told you different, it's because they're saving face. Because like they just can't get you up out of their face. It's like, yes, 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 we like you. Now, what the fuck you want? <laughs> What's yeah, that, my, I've never met anybody that uh, cared about anything that I had going on, really. Yeah. They might, they might talk that talk, you know. But um, for the most part, um. No one's ever gonna really care as much as you. I'll put money. I'll put my. You know, I'll put my life on that. No one is ever gonna care as much as you. Exactly. You know, people are not gonna. People. Yeah, people have a hard time feeling some type of empathy and compassion for you. Yeah. In, in most cases, really, if something happens to you, maybe you get sick, maybe you got hurt on the job, or maybe you was in some freak accident. I mean, people be like. They don't know how to react. They'll be, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And the next two minutes, they just change the subject and start talking about something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had that happen several times. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. But I was like in my Damn. earlier days. 
that was in my earlier days, you know, but yeah, the thing is like, you guys need to know like, Hey, you need to think like people do out here. If people just want to use you for business to see what you can do for them and get, you got to do the same thing. That's the only way you're going to survive. You know, you need to remove yeah. your emotions out of any situation that, uh, that that's, that's pretty what makes you a man. First and foremost is learning to control your emotions, removing your emotions out of every situation that you get into and use logic. You see, yeah, you know, with, with, um, with, uh, Serena Williams, for example, cause we were talking about Naomi Osaka. I mean, I, that was expected because she's a woman, but if a man was doing that, that would really make him look bitch made because it's like, you got to oh, yeah. remove your emotions from this situation. You dig? Yeah. And, and and like uh my man Tyler Hill said, he said, Look, there's nothing wrong with studying abroad. You know, there's nothing wrong with traveling and studying abroad, but never study abroad. <laughs> you dig? Uh that was a bar <laughs> that he said. <laughs> study abroad, yeah, but like never that. study abroad. Yeah. You know, it's leave these holes alone and, and stop getting them. and when a woman comes over to you, man. Man, control your emotions. You know, you need to know that you're the prize when you come over here. She can't get a man from her own community. She can't get a man from other people's communities over here. So she's with you for a reason. And, and at that moment, it sounds like, look here, we going to build. If you want to be on my team, we going to build. If you can't do that, if you're not down the build, then uh, conversation is over. And you can pay your tab. We're going to split the bill. You're going to pay your tab. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? A lot of guys don't like the fact that what you just said, because they don't, in their mind, they want to feel like they're first. Well, fuck them. In line. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here to to coddle anybody on this goddamn channel. I'm not here to coddle you. This is real. You want the truth? You want to improve yourself? Because many people, they want to travel. They want to, or they do travel. And it's not just Asia. It's Canada. It's South America. It's Europe. It's Africa. You know, it's the Middle East. It's everywhere, wherever you travel. People don't yeah. give a shit about you everywhere you go. So to look and to, and to look for some sort of camaraderie, people are like, yes, they love us. They love us. They, no. No, they don't. You are exactly. spending. They love your money. They love your money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, yo, man, you were not on her radar. <laughs> I hate to break it. Now, maybe you, you was just in the right place at the right time when you met her and everything kicked off. Great. But when she was 19, when she was 18, she was not thinking about marrying a black man. I hate to break it to you. Maybe you don't want to hear that, but that's just reality. And that's fine. If if y'all get along, y'all live, live for, live together for a long time and have kids. Great. But just look at it for what it is. That's all I'm saying. Well, when I meet a woman out here, she's she like, Oh, I like black guys. I'm like, Oh boy. Uh Oh, like, oh. you're that type. I'm like, Oh boy. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. Hold on. It's like, have you done any drugs before? <laughs> Do you go to the <laughs> hip hop clubs? Yes, yes. I like turning up at this club. I'm, uh -oh. like, I'm like, bye. <laughs> bye. Like turning up. Uh oh. You one of those times. <laughs> Do you have any kids? Yes, I did. No, oh, bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> uh, bye. You know, it's just, no. I remember this one chick, she told me that, yeah, yeah, I'm a hip hop head. I'm like, okay. Well, man, I mean, her, her, her titties were so big. Her titties were so big. I'm like, damn, I mean, that's pretty rare out here. So I'm going to have to get well acquainted. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm a. <laughs> so she pulled up in a car. Because, you know, most women uh -huh. out here, they don't have a car. So she picked me up. I'm like, okay. Very cute. And I still got pictures of her. Okay. Very cute. But, uh,. I mean, she picked me up. She was blasting Young Dolph. I'm like, yeah, I mean, the, the lyrics made me uncomfortable. Oh, my God, oh, she damn. Really, she really, she deep in the music. She listened to Young Dolph. Okay. Yeah, she, 
she, I'm like, I'm like, God, this, I'm like, can we turn to something else? Can you put on some Taylor Swift or something? So, let's, let's, let's put on like a something. She not even, she not even listening to Future. You listen to Young Dolph. No, you listen to Young <laughs> Dolph. <laughs> like uh, deep, she's deep in the music. <laughs> I'm like, listen to all that Memphis Orange Mound. I'm like, I'm like okay. <laughs> So, I mean, she was cool, but then when I got to know her, it was like, oh, okay. Like, her, her mother um, her mother had her very young, and, uh, you know, uh, when she was growing up, like, up until she was about four, her mother couldn't even afford to buy her milk, just starving. Uh, she was probably, her mother was probably a hoe, too. And then uh, a Chinese guy from China came over. He was a doctor. He was a big old trick. And, you know, he tricked off all his money, you know, all on that woman, on, you know, and he took care of the mother, her, he pretty much saved her and their life took a complete 180. They were living good, eating good. The father brought his step, you know, the stepdaughter, a house, a car, you know, the mother's living good now. I mean, I ain't mad at the mother, you know, that's what the simps are for. And then, but you know what? The mother didn't. The mother didn't want to have a kid with him. She didn't want to have, oh. you know, a Thai Chinese kid with him. So he never had kids with her. Wow. <laughs> to this day, he's, okay. he never had a kid. I'm like, okay. Uh. <laughs> it's unusual. You know, at least have one kid of his own with the woman, he, regardless of how, how big of a trick he is. Uh. <laughs> I mean, she accepted your money, but she ain't accepting your seed, you know, because, you know, yeah, that... Chinese ties over here, you know, because you're not pure blood. I mean, there I see Chinese ties all the time. You don't see them hang out with Thai people. Thai people do not kick it with Chinese ties out here. So, yeah. No, I've never seen that either. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's deep. So. We're an hour and 36 minutes in, man. I want to wrap this up. Any final words on the topic? Any last words that you want to give to the people out there? I would say, man, um, it starts with you and ends with you, man. You know, and you're only as good as the people that you have around you. You know, so, um, and nobody's out here is going to give you any real game. Unless they know you or like you or you paying them. So, hey, I mean, if you really want to change your life and take your game to the next level, go get my book, Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com. And go check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash sharp game. And, you know, and check out my, uh, my channel. Guy on Girl TV. That's all I got to say. Right. And on your website, uh, you, you have merchandise on your website, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to um, you go to my channel, you know, everything is there. Just chooseyourrelationships.com. That's where you find out uh, everything. That's where all the gear, the books. But if you go to my channel, you'll be able to, to navigate and find all the websites. All right. And me, Head Above Water Channel. Website splash wave fx dot net. We're over and we out. Peace.